Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Cash Practice Training Tuesday. And today, uh, we just had just finished up a really, really solid uh, weekly coaching call with my mastermind group. Of course, that's the source of you know the topics that I talk about in these live videos each week. And a big focus today was on different components of the the initial patient phone call. Um, again, as usual, the why do you why or do you take my insurance question came up. We we spent probably thirty minutes on that topic. But in the chat, um, different you know related topics and questions were coming through as I was talking about that. And one of my mastermind members said, "I'm having trouble converting my Medicare beneficiaries." to the cash pay mindset or whether they're established in, in this case, maybe transferring, transitioning out of network or transitioning uh, out of being participating provider, but also those who call in, you know, they're not established patients, they're Medicare beneficiaries. I'm having trouble converting them into patients on a cash pay basis. And I, you know, I'll preface this with a couple of things. One, I'm not an attorney. I say that time and again, it's all throughout the book I wrote on this topic. Um, I'm not telling people what to do on this. I'm telling you generally what the different components of the law says. Um, and then it's for you and your attorney to, to look at and decide what your risk tolerance is and, and how you want to approach this topic within your practice. I'll, often, I'll also preface this before we dive into that topic or my response to it um, with that. The, this is I'm going to use this as my official announcement. Uh, to the world that we have just now launched the silver level of my mastermind group. The cash-based practice mastermind now has a lower cost entry point. Um, you know, as I've been talking about a lot, uh, we really feel that we've got some some rough waters ahead. The next 12 plus months, uh, we are likely going to be entering a recession. And I want as many of our colleagues and practice owning colleagues um, to be able to make it through that as possible. So we have uh, we've come up with a way to, to, you know, make a much more affordable entry point um, into the mastermind and get the, the guidance and advice and, and everything that you need uh, to make it through um, these these rough waters currently and, and, and ahead. So um, if you want to check out that silver level of the mastermind and the gold and decide which of those uh, would be a best fit for you and your needs right now, you can go to drjaredcarter.com forward slash mastermind. We're uh, opening enrollment for only 30, um, 30 new enrollees. So um, that might go very quickly. I don't know, uh, but we're going to definitely cut it off when we hit that uh, just to make sure that everyone can get all of their the needs met and, and questions answered. Um, so with all that said, back to today's topic. So so my response there initially was that, in my opinion, it probably doesn't fit exactly well if you want to take a low risk approach to this topic to try and convince a Medicare beneficiary to see you on a cash pay basis. Some some practices are aggressive. Some attorneys are aggressive and say, look, if you explain the situation, have them sign the right paperwork, um, you know, and you've vetted all this with your own attorney you, that you might have a defensible you would have a defensible position. But I don't think that's actually really fully been tested. Usually when Medicare writes a practice, a non-participating practice or some, someone that doesn't have a, a, a relationship with Medicare and says, hey, you've been providing covered services to a Medicare beneficiary. Uh, but you're not participating, you need to, you know, refund all the money and or you're facing fines or whatever. Like most people say, OK, and they pay, you know, they pay it back and they run. Because as far as I know, no practice owner has said, nope, I did it all right. And uh, I have it all documented and they signed this paper and I'm fighting it because um, then you're fighting the U.S. government. And I'm not saying it'll never happen. But as far as I know, there's no precedent to that. And so, you know, a lot of people going into this, they're like, well, I'd like to take a lower risk option, uh, but I don't want to necessarily turn away every Medicare beneficiary just because they're a Medicare beneficiary. But the way that I go about it in my practice, again, I'm not suggesting how anyone else should go about this, is that if a prospective patient who's a Medicare beneficiary calls in, if they indicate that they would like to use their Medicare benefit for you know normally covered services like physical therapy, then we refer them out. Um, we don't try to convince them to use us on a cash pay basis 
uh, if they've indicated they really would like Medicare involved. A lot of times when we explain the situation, they're like, oh yeah, I knew, I know. Yeah, and I, I go cash bail all the time. You know, I'm, I'm part of a DPC practice. You know, I, I, I get it. I want to work with you guys. I don't want Medicare involved and I'm not going to send in self-claims. Like when they have made it really clear, you know, that small percentage of the people that call us, then we'll take them on as clients and we feel like we can safely do so. Again, that's just our approach, not in you know telling you what you should do. Um, but but generally, if you're if you feel like you're having to convince them and that they would like to have Medicare involved in paying for it, then I mean, if you're if you're trying to go lower risk, I would be really careful about that. And I would run that by your attorney. So uh, this is a very gray area topic. A lot of things don't have precedent as far as what's been tested in in court. Mostly it's just people, like I said, run the other direction. Um, And there's a lot of people who are, um, I think, both leaving money on the table by being, you know, by by feeling like any kind of cash pay service to a Medicare beneficiary is just like too much of a risk. But I also think that there are a lot of people that are taking pretty high risks um, as well, because they don't fully understand um, the, the rules of the, of the situation. So, um, you know, if this is the kind of feedback from an expert in this topic and so many others that has coached private practice owners, whether fully insurance based and transitioning out of network or starting completely cash pay, if that's interesting to you, again, this is what we do every week. We have a private Facebook group. You can constantly ask questions in there. Um, we have a wonderful group of, of very supportive practice owners in the same boat as you. Uh, so if you are interested in that, we've got, you know, if you're on my email list already, you can you can go to drjaredcarter.com forward slash newsletter. This weekend, I'll be in, I'll be email this week and this weekend, I'll be emailing some promo codes and some different things just to my email list. Um, so hop on there if you're interested. But uh, to check out those different systems, I'm sorry, levels of the mastermind and to see what kind of guidance and support that you would get, um, go to drjaredcarter.com forward slash mastermind. So excited to finally have another level, the silver level, uh, much more affordable. Uh, obviously, you know, not as many features as the gold level, but there's kind of something for everyone, depending on your needs and your desires and, and what's going on in your practice right now and, and what we're likely looking at here in the next 12 uh, plus months. So thank you, as always, for tuning in and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.